The month of February has gone by and I'm gonna tell you guys everything that I watched in that month for movies and TV shows. Okay, so I didn't watch as many movies as I did in January, but actually it's because I'm obsessed with Stardew Valley and I've been playing it every night because I just have no life and I wanna tend to my farm, take care of my chickens and my cows and my sheep. So yeah, if there's a video game recommendation, I recommend Stardew Valley. It's very chill. It's like Farmville, but good. Okay, let's start with the movies. The first one that I watched in February was First Reformed. This movie surprised me a lot because I was not expecting it to take the direction that it did. At first glance, it's just a movie about this priest who has these inner demons. No pun intended. It just seems like this really serious drama when in reality, it actually took a lot of creative risks and story risks that I wasn't expecting at all. By the end of it, I wasn't even aware of how tense I was from watching him you know, spiral into this dread and this despair. I'm not gonna give spoilers, but the ending is pretty bold. It can be interpreted in a lot of different ways, which I found fascinating because it gave this kind of sense of hope, if that's the way that you wanna look at it. I love Ethan Hawke's acting in everything that he does, but in this one specifically, he was incredible. My God, what a movie. <laughs> then I watched a movie that has been talked about a lot that I was very, very excited to watch, and it's Malcolm and Marie. <sighs> the disappointment is not small, my friends. From all of the photos that I had seen and the trailers, it just looked absolutely stunning. And that is something that stayed true. It was visually very stunning, aesthetically pleasing. The cinematography was about the only thing I liked about this movie. It was just this huge argument that was so repetitive. I felt like the dialogue was even, it wasn't really realistic to me. They started and ended almost every sentence by saying their name. Just leave me alone, Malcolm. What are you doing, Malcolm? Do you want mac and cheese, Malcolm? That was driving me crazy. It seemed like it was a play to me. I was very disappointed with this movie because I was just expecting it to be great. I love Euphoria, so I was expecting it to have a little bit more substance, but it was just very surface. I didn't really like it. Zendaya looked beautiful though, and I kind of want a mac and cheese after it. Then I rewatched one of my favorite movies from the 2000s, and it's The Devil Wears Prada. That movie is just amazing. It's great, it's iconic, it's outstanding. The only thing about the movie that is not iconic, it's Andy's boyfriend, Andy's friends. Mm -mm. Also, the fact that Anne Hathaway is supposed to be unattractive, I just don't understand how she was casted like that so much. Like, have you seen Anne Hathaway? She is not unattractive, no matter how frizzy you make her hair. Shut up! But yeah, I, I love this movie. It's one of the classics from the 2000s, in my opinion. Ah, <sighs> this next one, I, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it. I'm so glad I watched The Devil Wears Prada after Malcolm and Marie because I needed a pick-me-up, right? Because I was not ready for what I was about to watch. I watched Earwig and the Witch, the new Studio Ghibli movie that it's all in 3D animation. Okay, so when the movie started, I was actually hopeful. I was enjoying it. I thought the intro song animation was super cute. Um, everything just went downhill from there. And honestly, when I watched the first scene, I was pretty excited. I thought, this looks cool. I want to see how the story unfolds. And then we just never saw that happen in the movie at all. The first scene had nothing to do with the rest of the movie. So we have this little girl named Airwig. She's an orphan. And for some reason, the whole movie is just about her doing things that just lead to nowhere. I know that that's a kind of a common thing with Studio Ghibli movies where the characters do a lot of mundane things, but ultimately those things do lead to at least character growth or they are somehow intertwined with the story and they have some heart to them. But this one, it was just so random. She was just do random things that did not move the story forward, did not move her character forward. Earwig has no other purpose in the movie than to get people to do whatever she wants. And that never changes throughout the movie. She stays the exact same bratty, annoying child. Now the animation, 
and I have nothing really of substance to say other than it was just not pleasant to look at. The babies, the babies had looked like had mascara on. That's that, I guess. After that, I watched Framing Britney Spears, which is a documentary on Hulu, all about Britney and what the paparazzi and the entertainment industry has done to her. It was honestly heartbreaking. We all know what she's been going through for years, but I feel like this documentary really puts a light on how freaking unfair the entertainment industry has been towards her, how they treated female celebrities, how the paparazzi has literally no boundaries whatsoever and how that has been so detrimental to her mental health, to her well-being. It's just really sad, but it's very informative if you want to learn more about Britney and about her case and what she's going through, then I suggest you watch this documentary. It's actually pretty eye-opening, I would say. Then I rewatched one of my favorite movies from my childhood and it's Matilda. I will never get tired of watching Matilda because it is just happiness in a little bottle. I could be sad and crying all day and this movie will definitely cheer me up. Also, I really just want to live in Miss Honey's cottage. I feel like she's just so happy with life, except for, you know, her abusive aunt. But apart from that, she has a cottage. That's, yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> then I rewatched Pretty Woman and if you watched my last video, you know that I went to the hotel where Pretty Woman was shot. <laughs> it sounds like someone killed her. Pretty Woman, but no, I meant filmed. I went to some iconic film locations and Pretty Woman was one of them. It's one of those classics that you have to watch. But did you know that she was actually, I think was 19 years old when she filmed this movie? And Richard Gere was like 39? I think they were like 20 years apart. Hmm. Then I watched a movie that I honestly don't know why I watched it. I felt like I was strong enough to watch it, but I most certainly was not and it's Suspiria. As some of you guys know, I don't really watch horror movies. I'm just weak, man. I just can't watch horror movies because I will be thinking about them at night when everything is dark and I just don't want that in my mind. I don't think I was in the right headspace to watch it. I thought it was... Honestly, I couldn't really concentrate that much in the movie because it was just too much to handle for me. So I have no valid opinion on this movie. I feel like I watched it through a lens that it's not how you're supposed to watch it. I don't know. I was scared. Maybe if I make a YouTube video about it, I'll force myself. Kind of like I did with Hereditary. I only watched it because I was going to make a YouTube video about it. Then I watched probably the best movie that I've watched in a while and it's Judas and the Black Messiah. It was an incredible movie with some of the most powerful performances that I've seen in a while. I'm so glad that Daniel Kaluuya won the Golden Glove for Best Actor because he, or Best Supporting Actor because he totally deserves it. I really want to see them get awards and nominations for all of the Academy Awards because it was truly incredible, so powerful, just outstanding on all levels. Then I watched To All The Boys Always and Forever. I almost didn't watch this movie because the second one I just did not like at all. I really liked the first To All The Boys. But the second one was such a disappointment that I was like, oh, they're just gonna make one good movie and then all of the sequels are just gonna be sequels, you know? But the third one actually surprised me. It was really, really cute and it reminded me a lot of how the first one was made. I love how much personality these films have. I love the color palette. I think it's not something that we often see in teen romance movies. I did feel like the story wasn't as strong as the first one. It did feel a little bit more montage Montage but I thought it was a great wrap up to this series and it was just cute. Then I watched another movie that has been talked about a lot um, these days and it's I Care A Lot. Rosamund Pike comes back again to play a cold hearted bitch. She truly is great at these roles although she played just an absolute angel in Pride and Prejudice. In I Care A Lot she plays a woman who is taking advantage of elderly people who cannot take care of their finances anymore so she basically takes control of them which is absolutely horrible. But this movie was fun. <laughs> it, it was a fun movie though to watch. It was really, really entertaining and twisty. I genuinely didn't know what was going to happen. I think Rosamund Pike is very terrifying and I shall be very afraid if I ever meet her. 
I do think her character was very interesting, which is why I wish that we had seen more depth to her. I feel like we only explored hers on the surface level. I feel like we didn't really see the why, we just saw her doing bad stuff. So overall, I feel like the movie needed something more, but it was entertaining and I think Rosamund Pike was incredible. After that, I watched The Love Witch. Believe it or not, this movie was made in 2016, even though it does not look like it was. The aesthetic is, of course, the strongest strongest point in this movie it's beautiful to look at and honestly kudos to the director and everyone that made this movie possible because they were truly able to capture that look however it was way too long so i feel like there were just filler scenes that the director didn't want to really get rid of i did get bored a bit with some of the scenes which is why i'm saying that maybe some of them could have been cut that way i feel like the plot could have been more defined overall i really enjoyed it and it was honestly one of the most gorgeous films i've seen in a while then i watched nomadland directed by Chloe Sao, who just won Best Director at the Golden Gloves. She is, I believe, the second female director to win. This movie was gorgeous, especially the story. It kind of felt like a documentary in the way that it's so intimate and so raw. It was just mesmerizing and calm. That sort of calmness that actually makes you take a step back and realize what's really important in life. It was a little heartbreaking at some points, but also kind of freeing. It's just a beautiful film in every way. The next movie I watched is Blade Runner 2049. I had never seen it before and I've never seen the original either. So I'm not really familiar with the world of Blade Runner, which is why I feel like I was a little bit confused at some points with some of the terminology and some of the characters and just some of the things made me a little bit confused. But nonetheless, I thought it was a stunning movie um, and I really enjoyed it I was very entertained even though it was two hours long or two and a half hours long it was so long I still enjoyed it a lot and I found it to be very captivating and beautiful Ryan Gosling and Ana de Armas were incredible their chemistry their dynamic um, I love their characters and I was waiting to see if maybe Ana de Armas character would have some sort of some sort of awakening individualistic thoughts or something like that kind of like the movie her and yeah i just found it to be really interesting and very heartbreaking at some points it had a lot of up and downs i wouldn't say i'm the biggest sci-fi person but i'm glad i watched this movie because i truly enjoyed it let me know if i should watch the original one i'm still deciding okay so those were the movies that i watched but i did watch one tv show and that is one division of course to be completely honest one division is probably my favorite Marvel anything from movies from TV shows. I think one division is the most creative and unique Thing that Marvel has ever done a lot of people told me that the first two episodes were kind of meh from the third one on It would get really good, but honestly, I really liked the first two episodes Also, I felt like they were super creative and I loved the approach that they took to make it You know like those sitcoms and so so I really enjoyed watching You know WandaVision in that style. I thought it was really fun all right that was everything that i watched in february let me know what you guys have been watching if you've watched any of the movies or show that i mentioned in this video and let me know your thoughts if you have any recommendations for me to watch during march and then maybe i can review it at the end of march please let me know in the comments thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys on the next one Bye.